Yeah, I guess let me uh, do the mom's letter to um that the lawyer wrote to her. I'm not going to read the whole thing. It just says, I was glad to have the opportunity to speak to you this morning, follow our conversation, and I emailed the first eight chapters of the Child Protective Services Manual. As I explained to you over the phone, the ability of Child Protective Services to remove children is a function of state law, which is funny because, again, we live in the Commonwealth. So it would be Commonwealth law, not state law. And what's even funnier, it would be under the Virginia Code of 1950, where he's pulling this stuff from. It says, particularly Virginia Code. Section 16.1-2.51, uh, oh, no, 251 and 252. For purposes of our present case. The only problem is, it's not my case, it's your case, it's not our present case, it's your present case, and I don't wish to appear. When people tell me, so call, you're not appearing in family court? Nope. Your son to appear? Uh, the legal person was, the father was. The only thing I know is I'm a man. And I wrote them 18 freaking pages of what I am and what I am not, and who they are and who they and who are, who they are not. And I opened up my own court. So obviously, I'm going to have to write a lovely letter. Of course, Wednesday, they're having another court hearing, and I'm going to write to explain to Bob or Susie, whoever seems to be the hearing officer, that if anything happens on Wednesday where I get further loss or harm or injury to I, the man, whoever Bob or Susie is, whoever decides to make a ruling and administrate my property without my consent, is also going to be added to the claim that I put before the court on last Wednesday. And I'm with somebody to appear as man in my court. And that's how I wrote on my claim, Susie Cupcake, the director, and uh, the governor, whatever his name is, Terry, however you pronounce his last name, not a clue. I define him as a man, as a wrongdoer. The same about a governor. There's not one mention that they were director, and not one mention that's a governor. Like I said, I put the director's name down there, thank God. I went immediately, and I started to go... But the paperwork, not to the caseworker, not to the case manager, not to their supervisor, not to uh, uh, an associate a director. I went straight to the top. I went straight to the director. So how I explain it to people, why I believe it's such a good idea to go straight to the director, is like, say we're making a movie. Say a Disney movie. Again, let's do Hannah Banana and Billy Ray Cyrus. And uh, the director has Miley Ray Cyrus do something really stupid, and she gets hurt or harmed or injured. Um, Daddy, obviously, I'm going to make a claim that the director took and carried off, or the director would kept the child longer, kept Miley Ray Cyrus longer than we agreed on. We only agreed to have her there until Daddy could come and pick her up. Fine. We agreed that uh, the, the government, the sheriff's departments, fire departments, the Good Samaritan, saw that my child was in danger and took her into the Good Samaritan's home or took her into the church. A priest saw her in trouble, took her into the nun saw her in trouble, took her into the church notified daddy, something went horribly wrong, got to daddy, turned the child back over to daddy. The, the church can't hold the child indefinitely until it finds out why, you know, investigates why the girl, you know, got hurt or why the girl was out. No, you just give it back to that who it belongs to. You say, you know what, uh, if I was you, I'd take a better, a closer eye on that uh, Miley Ray Cyrus. She's a little wild one. You better take care of your kid because, uh, you know, crazy shit like this, you know, happens all the time. So, yeah, okay, thanks for all your concern, but uh, I, I got it from here. So that's what I'm basically trying to convey to the director, that I have it from here. And she basically told me to go pound salt in a nice way. You know, they hung up on me, which was fantastic. So the negotiations ended when they hung up. Now I have the opportunity to live claim before the court. Because negotiations had broken down. And there's no sense for pursuing this any longer since they just hung up, didn't even say goodbye, just went and click. This call is going to be terminated. So then I could pursue it. Yay. So I have absolute proof that I tried to settle it on the private side. I did everything honorably, and they hung up on me. You know, the negotiations just broke down. So how long does Billy Ray Cyrus have to wait? Because the director doesn't want to return Miley Ray. He could wait about 10 seconds before he goes before a court and says, I require this court, go and get that which is mine and place it with me immediately. No more fooling around. Get it back. So not only is he going to get go after the director of the Disney film she's in, who else is he going to go after? Because obviously the director's a paid employee of Disney, or paid contractor of Disney. Obviously, he's going to go after Disney as well. And he's going to obviously go after the chairman of the board, Mr. Walt Disney himself. So who's the chairman of the board of every state agency? The governor. So if you look it up, you'll, you'll see it within your own uh, state, you know, it'll say the chairman of the DHR board is Social Services Board, this uh, 
the financial, you know, agency, the chairman of the board is the governor. He's the chairman of every single one of these agencies. So obviously, I'm putting down Walt Disney. And what's hysterical, I put the paperwork into the court clerk lady, and she said, who's this Terry McGulliff? She couldn't even pronounce his last name either. I can't pronounce it either. And uh, I said, uh, put their address down. So I put down the address I knew was 68 Huff Lane in Verona, where that lady's uh, government center is. Now, where the governor's mansion is in Richmond, I have no clue. So obviously, he's not going to be able to be served properly on Monday morning. The sheriff's department is going to come back and say there is no Terry McGooley at that location. Somebody's going to say he's the governor. I think Cole's going after the governor. So it's funny. I'll tell you guys that either some other day or later. I actually went down and talked to Brad Zinn, the newspaper writer, after I filed my claim. I talked to him in the lobby for about an hour. And when I mentioned something about Frank and uh, the government has to come after people now, the stuff on their computer, like they have to, like the King Charles did, and went after people with their paper and effects that he'd go into people's home and read their personal letters or open up their mail. The government's doing that now to see who is, you know, going to go against the government policy or say something bad about the government or Barack Obama or somebody. First, they're going to start with saying that we've got to go into your computers to see kitty porn. And then they're going to say, well, you're a, national, you're a danger to the national interest. You are writing subversive uh, uh, paperwork or saying subversive things about the government, and we can't allow that because we're in war. And you can go back, and I don't care how many wars we've been in, you'll always see that they've set up some sort of like a concentration camp for people who uh, go against what the government policy is at that particular moment in time. I mean, especially World War One was incredible. I'm trying to remember exactly what it was called. The, not the internment that they did back then during World War I, but it was massive how they were just rounding up every freaking body, everybody's going to jail, who said anything about we should stay out of the war. We shouldn't go into the war. You know, it's, it's going to happen again. It always happens. It's just going to repeat itself. We've just got young kids who are 20, 30 years old have no freaking clue what I just said. And there's people my age, 50 years old, who still have no freaking clue what I said. But anyway, we went back to uh, going after the director and the executive producer of a movie. That's basically what I'm doing. I went after the director. She's actually literally called the director of social services. And the governor is actually called the chairman of the board of social services. So it all kind of makes sense why I'm going in that direction because they're – now, it's funny. When I brought it up to the newspaper guy, he, he, says, well, he says, I'm going to love to see how you're going to cost the money. I said, I'm, I, I explained in great detail what I would do with that judgment after I got the judgment how I'd sell a judgment, how I'd move the judgment, how I'd move another court, how I'd move a debt court, how I'd move all kinds of courts, how I'd move all kinds of financial institutions by holding this judgment. And on the full faith of my credit clause, that judgment would be good everywhere. So I'm not going to bother explaining judgments no more because I guarantee I did. And I guarantee that Craig Lynch guy probably broke it apart and I ain't doing it again. I'm done saying this stuff a hundred times. Right now I'm just concentrating on the kids. So, um, yeah, back to the letter that my mom got from the attorney. The uh, attorney guy, she actually went out to go get an attorney, which, you know, I think is kind of amusing because you get no standing in court, you know, because she had no legal custody. And if she actually tried to get custody, she'd have to get fingerprinted, background check. She would have to get a home study done. There'd be a whole plethora of hoops she'd have to jump through before those kids would ever get back here. She would be looking at a minimum, I'd say, at least eight months before they'd even think about it. So I basically was trying to tell you, you're wasting your time. But anyway. Let me get back to that letter. I wonder if he said our instant case. No, he said our present case. He always usually it's like saying our instant case. Okay, he said our present case. Lovely. The only question before the court is um, whether it is necessary the government may inform to prevent further abuse and neglect. CPS will argue that there is a danger of harm to the children, which is funny. Harm means actual physical. If they return to your care under the present circumstances, CPS is likely... See, what's funny is now they're saying CPS. First they said that the children are under the custody of Valley Community Services. Now they're saying it's under the CPS, Child Protective Services. That's, that's, that's interesting. Who is moving this court? That's why I keep asking. Who? Not what, because you guys keep changing, you know, the player here. First it was Valley Community Services. Now it's CPS. CPS is likely going to take the position that you are willing to put the safety of you about whom your husband could come home. I said to my mom when she went there for the bail hearing with him, they said, is Frank, uh, can Frank come home if we send him bail? And she said, yes. So I said to her, look, if you felt that this was a trick question, a trap question, which it was, you say, no, he can't come home, then you're saying that you believe that something happened. 
if you said he can come home, then you're saying that nothing happened. So when you said he can come home, you know, you, they pinned you in a corner. They asked you a question that they knew no matter which way you went, they were going to slap you. So you go left, you go right, they were going to still smack you back into the corner. I said, it's a trick question. I said, all you have to say to them is say, hmm, at this time I don't feel comfortable in answering that question. Let me seek out competent counsel and I'll provide to this court a proper answer in 72 hours. At this time, I, I, I wish to seek out competent counsel before I provide a court that answer to that question. And you could have just stood on that. Instead of making it like all you people do, except for Gus, Gus is getting good at it. All you people, and the Moldovian guy was good. Okay, so there are other people out there. They're getting good at this. And hey, that's right, Sean is getting good at this. He said, hey, unless uh, habeas corpus is suspended, I still am going to require that the, uh, my accuser appear. So you, know, you guys, okay, you, okay, I shouldn't bash you guys that hard, man. Some of you guys are getting it. That um, when they ask you a question, you basically ask, who the fuck are you? And if you wish to ask me that question, you better put it in writing. And if you wish for the proper answer, you're going to have to give me leave of court to send you to the house or a properly answer this court after I seek out proper counsel, competent counsel. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. To this, to CPS, this creates a problem. See, to CPS, this creates a problem. I told my mom, who is this Mr. or Mrs. CPS? Because it says CPS will argue. Do you mean by way of an attorney? CPS, this thing, this administrative agency, or this division of an agency? Because I guarantee CPS is not an agency on itself on its own. I guarantee it's some sort of a division of family services or whatever the hell they got going on at the state capitol. But the branch of their agency, CPS, will argue, oh, really? And I'm going to say, oh, is CPS here today? Well, it's represented by counsel. Oh, really? And is that a counsel have any first-hand knowledge that anything it's going to bring before the court or he or she's going to bring before the court is true? Is the CPS attorney going to testify that it's true today? No, I didn't think so. And why would I even bother wasting my time going into juvenile court, domestic relations court, family court? Why would I even waste my time? Because the judge is going to say, I'm out of order. Or the judge is going to say, we don't do that here. We just want to come to court. We all just sit here and we're a big family. We're all citizens and I'm the mommy. And I'm going to determine what's best for you, Junior, and what's best for your grand for, for your mom and the grandkids. You know, I'm going to make the ruling because I'm the high priest, the priestess. Yeah, right. I got the one way track to God. Yeah, whatever. So, CPS is uh, da, 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 CPS is likely to take a position that you're willing to break the state's agreement by saying that your husband could come home. Of course, he could come home. What happens if he's exonerated? What happens if he finds it's not true? What was he going to say? No, she can't come home. This is ridiculous. The CPS, this creates a problem. Not because your husband might come home, but because you're willing to break the safety agreement you signed. Oh, that's special. And she signed a safety agreement. Yeah, she's got no authority or position to sign a safety agreement. They're not her kids. They're mine. I got legal custody of those kids, not her. So it's pretty funny that they were having her sign safety agreements when uh, they had no right to propose, make a proposal to her in the first place. It was just that lovely. That's why she said to me on Monday, she said, they're furious at me because they found out I don't have to do the custody of kids. They want to know why I have your kids called. I said, because I came to you. She's like, but where's the legal paper? There is no legal paper. I'm not a legal person. I gave you lawful custody. I'm a man. You know, a man is bound by natural law. There's a natural law. There's an absolute law that why I did what I did. It's our common belief. It's our common law that when that daddy can't wipe a little girl's behind, he places it with grandma. If grandma's not available, he places it with aunt. If aunt's not available, he places it with one of his female cousins. If cousin isn't available, I place it with one of my female nieces. That's the common belief traditions of the devout people. So before the written before the written word even existed since caveman time, this is what daddy's always done. In accordance to our law, not some legal ridiculousness that only been around since like eighteen eighty. Look back to love. I think we would have a fighting chance if we were able to show CPS and the court, whatever this magical mass name CPS is, huh, I should call it, I should say, hey, where's Kips? Hey, what? Where's Kips? What? This guy, Kips. You know, Kips what? Kips will argue that there's a danger. Who's Kips? I don't say CPS. No, CPS is what? Who is going to come forth and argue? Well, their attorney. No, that's the attorney is a what? And then what is going to come forth and testify? I said, who is going to testify? It's just going to give them a brain fart. If I walk into that courtroom and I start doing that stuff, so I say, you know what? Screw this. You know, I'm just going to take them across the street and settle it across the street. I think you would have a fighting chance if we were able to show CPS in the court 
that Call had left the premises and had gone on with his life that existed prior to your husband's arrest and away from the girls. My mom was smart and said, honestly, if he moved across the street to the mobile home park, say he just decided to rent a $500 a month mobile home across the street, which he can, he'll actually literally be closer to the girls if he moves across the street to that mobile home park than way back in the field behind the barn. So how far, literally, does CPS call want to move? Across the street, across the other side of the planet? How far, literally, does call have to remove himself from the premises before CPS will be freaking happy? And I told my, my mom, at least she understood that. She said it without me coaching. I was like, holy shit, mom, that was brilliant. I said, that's fucking fantastic. You know, your, your brain is functioning at that at a decent level that you're able to throw back at them. Because literally, they're just making you jump through hoops. They're just bullshitting you, bullshitting you, bullshitting you. They're not going to let those kids come anywhere near me or come to home because it's the other part of the letter clearly says it has to do with Frank and them being sued. So, Kips, or CPS, sees that it's in the best interest of the girls that they not be influenced by anyone who is doubting their stories. And it's not their stories, it's a girl's story. CPS basically takes the view that someone taking care of the girls has to either be behind uh, them 100% as dictated by CPS. He actually said as dictated by CPS. That CPS basically takes the view. What do you mean basically takes the view? He's saying they do take the view. CPS basically takes the view that someone taking care of the girls has to either be behind them 100% as dictated by CPS or that person or persons against the girls and poses a threat to them during the course of the criminal investigation. Yay! F and yay! There it is. Bottom line, that they pose as a threat to them during a course of a criminal investigation. So, how is the girls going to be threatened during a criminal investigation? They're afraid daddy's going to ask them questions. Like, hey, kid, the cop told me you were never nude in front of grandpa. Were you ever nude in front of grandpa? No. Was grandpa ever nude in front of you? No. So, um, if you weren't nude and grandpa wasn't nude, grandpa have sex with you? Well, no. Okay. Just asking, kid. Just wondering this. Did you guys ever, like, uh, run around naked in a pool or something like that? You know, take off your bathing suits and just swim naked and frolic and... No. Okay, I'm just asking these questions, kids, because I just want to know. So, see, I would actually do the dad thing because I'm competent. And anybody who knows me and anybody who's ever dealt with me knows I know how to ask people certain questions a certain way. I'm a hell of a litigator. And I know how to get to the bottom of this. Because, like I said, all I would do if Frank actually had to appear in court is I would question my daughter on the witness stand. I'd ask her a simple question. I'd say, here, honey, here's $100. Say, Grandpa did it. Grandpa did it. Here, honey, and I'd give her like $2,000. Now I'd say, Grandpa didn't do it. Grandpa didn't do it. i rest my case, and I'd walk away. And she'd hold the $2,000 in her hand. Why? Because we're going to make a million dollars off the county anyway. So what's the big deal? Because we're going to sue this guy's ass. We're going to sue the county's ass. Whoever runs this county for, for holding this man indefinitely without bail on the word of an incompetent minor. Yay. That's why incompetence can't testify. Because you can hand them a box of cookies and tell them, now say this. Okay. Would you like a pony? Another pony? Yeah. Now say that. Okay. The reason they're manipulated, they're easily scared. They don't have the ability to understand the word honor. It takes many, many years for any man to understand the word honor. And almost nobody on these shows understands what the word honor is. Because you, we were open taught since we were little kids to have white lies, to speak white lies. I am horrible at white lies. When my sister took me to get glasses, she realized I needed glasses because I have a night blindness. This one, I had no money. So thank God, I bought her glasses now too. Believe me, it's payback time for me. I'm compensating her. She did great. She took damn good care of me for three years. So now I'm taking care of her phone bills. I'm taking care of her car. I'm taking care of her glasses. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm taking care of her now in whatever little ways I can. But anyway, she took me to the eye doctor, and I have um, I see great two, three feet away from me because that's where books are and that's where the computer was, and I didn't give my eyes enough exercise for three years, and I can't see distance very clearly anymore. But boy, can I read a book, and boy, can I see a computer crystal clear. So the lady tried to put the glasses on me, and I said, ma'am, I'm not a baby. I know how to adjust glasses. And my sister said, Carl, can you just let this poor woman do her job? You know, just be served, Carl. It's not, no big deal. I hate people serving me. I, I hate it I, because I feel I owe a debt. And then I got to compensate. I don't like anybody doing anything for me. I like doing it for myself as much as I can, obviously. You know, because I don't, I don't wish to compensate every single body five, you know, a million times a day. 
And that's what I tell people who call me up on these shows. Uh, the people who uh, call me up. They say, call, I've been listening to these shows religiously. I think some guy actually said to me, religiously for five months, morning, noon, and night. I'll compensate you, call, if you give me help now. I say, wait a second, wait a second. You said you've downloaded all my shows. You've listened to me religiously for five months. You haven't compensated me yet. But you said, if I help you one-on-one, now you'll compensate me. What do you call those five months of shows? Do not call those five months of shows helping you. I was like, well, yes, but now I just personally need your interaction one-on-one. Oh, so I provided a service to you for all these years or all these months. And not one time did you feel compassionate or did you feel moved to compensate? How do you people think you're going to pull this off in court when you don't know how to act like a man, when you're getting something from your fellow man and you're not returning something? Isn't this just lovely? Because what I do is a lifestyle. And you still got to get past that man in a black robe. And that man that's in the black robe is going to be able to tell if you are truly a man by the way you act before him. Like simple things I was doing when I went to court uh, not too long ago. Every time um, the woman um, stenographer was getting up and down or the court clerk lady was getting up and down, I was standing up and down in court. Now, the bailiff and everybody must have thought that was effing crazy. You know, they said, what is this guy standing up? I guess he's got to go bathroom or something. No, a woman stood up. So a woman stood up. I stand up. Why? What does a man do? Why does a man stand up when a woman stands up? I explained that on my shows in the past. I ain't explained it again. But there's a reason why I did what I did. So if you guys just pull this stunt in court and say, hey, the judge says, what are you doing? Why are you standing there every time she stands up? What are you doing? Where are you going? Well, what's going on? Don't worry about it, Your Honor. You, you know, I, I hope you know that that's what a man does. And I have to explain in great detail why I'm doing what I'm doing. But you guys ain't going to do it, you know, because it's a lifestyle. You guys can't fake being a man. You can't. And this is why so many people crash and burn when you actually have to go perform in an open court. That's why even though you might know Shakespeare and you might know Othello, like the back of your hand, you're still not Lawrence Olivier. You're still not going to win the Oscar. It ain't going to happen. You know, I don't care how bad you want to get that Oscar, there's only one Lawrence Olivier, and you ain't him. So that's why I tell people, try to carry this all off in paper before you got to open it up in court. You know, don't try to just open up a court like I'm doing because... It's, it's a lot of acting skills involved. Try to do it with paper, pen, and ink. Try to do it in two, three sentences. Try to settle it on the product. So anyway, let's go back to here. CPS is not going to take anyone's word alone. That call is not going to be influencing the girls during the criminal proceedings. There you go. The call is not going to influence the girls during the criminal proceedings. See, this is what it's all about. It has absolutely nothing to do with the girls are in danger. It has to do with the county's in danger, the cops in danger, the jail's in danger, the detention center's in danger. Everybody's in danger. The girls are in the danger. So there you go. It is my understanding. Oh, this is a good one. You guys will know this. It is my understanding that call may be in the sovereign citizen movement. <laughs> I bash those guys every which way from Sunday. It's too funny. So, but that's funny. It's my understanding. That's pretty funny. And that he has sued public employee on claims that were thrown out of court. Oh, no, I haven't sued a public employee. I've sued a man and a woman. And uh, obviously, I can't go back into Alabama. Why? Because uh, I like to live. I like to, be, I like to not go and be held indefinitely until when? I get 100000 I told these people back in 2001. I said, oh, yeah? You know when I want to move my claim against you? They said, what? Oh, I bet it's in the case file somewhere. And they actually wrote that down. Call said he's going to come back here with 100,000 people. So you know, that's when Call's going to come and move his case before the court when he has 100,000 people behind him. I did not know so much of how the Internet was going to play into this factor, but I knew that there was something called the Internet 